Okay, hi. I just wanted to talk a little bit about number 10 in chapter 17. Our approach to this problem is going to be to figure out which equation to use to find the allowable load. And to do that, we're going to compare the slenderness, the slenderness ratio KL over R, we're going to compare that to CC. And if our slenderness is greater than CC, we're going to use the Euler equation, and if our slenderness is less than CC, if it's not very slender, then we can use the parabolic equation. And apparently here we're dealing with machine steel. So we would use one of these bottom two equations for machine steel. If we end up using the parabolic equation, we could just use the parabolic equation for structural steel because they're really not essentially any different, they're just expressed differently. The definition for CC has been put into the uh, equation for machine steel for the parabolic equation. So instead of just putting CC in the machine steel version of the parabolic equation, it's uh, they put in 2 pi squared E over yield stress. Yikes. So you could really either use the machine form of the parabolic equation in the book or this one up here is the same equation so you could use that too if it suits you. But if it turns out that our column is slender and we have to use the Euler equation then we can't use the structural form because in this equation it's already assumed that we're going to use a, fi a safety factor of 1.92. Let's, uh, I want to show you where this 149,000 came from. If you take the top part of the equation down here, pi squared e, and you divide by a factor safety of 1.92, and you plug in the uh, Young's modulus of elasticity for E here, you end up getting exactly 149,000. And for structural steel, that's fine because you use a factor of safety of 1.92. But with the, the machine steel, the factor of safety is higher. So in this question, they want you to use a factor of safety of 2.5. So if it turned out our column was slender, and if you know, and therefore, if we did have to use the Euler equation, we would have to use a version based on this equation here for the critical stress. How do we turn this equation of critical stress into an equation for allowable stress? Well, just divide by a factor of safety. Watch very quickly with one step. If we divide by a factor of safety, we turn the critical stress into an allowable stress. And so this would be the equation you could use to find the allowable stress in the situation where the factor of safety is 2.5. Other things to think about in this question. Uh, hinged ends, that's basically like pinned ends. So when you're think, figuring out your uh, k value, it's basically just two pinned ends for the column. So the effective length would be equal to the normal length. K, is, K would be 1. And when you're looking at your slenderness, when you're trying to figure that out, we have to figure out what value she used for the radius of gyration. Uh, so first of all, we have to look at which axis that radius of gyration is going to be around. Because either of these um, axes will, will yield different radius of gyration. It would be a little bit longer for the longer side, a little bit shorter for the shorter side. So we just have to think about which way is this thing likely to bend and buckle and break in. And clearly it will be along the, um, it would bend this way. Around the axis where the radius of gyration is shortest. And I, there was a question about like, what is the radius of gyration? 
and it basically just expresses the distribution of the area of an object. So if all of the area, if you have like a hula hoop, and all of the area is at the very outer edge, then your radius of gyration is essentially just the radius of that hoop. Or if you have a shape like this, your radius of gyration around this axis is going to be nearly all the way to the end of the, the bars on the end, because most of the area is concentrated on the outside. And in this moment of inertia, there's an equation for this moment of inertia we've been talking about it equals the area times the radius of gyration squared. And if we solve for r here, we can express the radius of gyration in terms of i and the cross-sectional area. Or if we have a rectangle like we do here, we can use another better shortcut and just take the, uh, the side length and divide by the square root of 12. And in this case, we'd use the, the shorter side length because uh, the short radius of gyration here is controlling. So that's the R we're going to use to determine our uh, allowable stress. And it's called controlling because that's the way that this, uh, this column is, is going to bend. It's not going to bend this way first and break that way. It's definitely going to bend that way. And just one more thing to remember when you're doing this problem is that the CC you're comparing your KL over R2, you can find this, uh, you can find your CC using this equation here. And once you find the CC, you can compare it to your slenderness ratio, KL over R. And if you find that your slenderness is less than CC, you can use the parabolic formula. And if it's greater, use the Euler formula. Made with DoodleCast Pro.